recently I stumbled across the work of one of the greatest photographers of our time. His images immediately struck me with their masterful use of high contrast and often abstract imagery that take the familiar and banal and turn them into something eerie and exotic. This juxtaposition makes something as boring as a passing bus into magic. There's something about these unique images that made me want to break out of the mold I've built around myself to push harder and try something different. This photographer was Trent Park. You know, I've been feeling a little uninspired by landscape photography lately. I'm at a place in my life where I don't get to travel very much, and I've shot a lot of these locations so many times that I'm finding it hard to come up with something unique and original. And I've always had that as a goal in my photography, to come up with something new and different that people don't see every day. That's why I got into long exposure. And then even infrared photography. And now lately I've been finding my interest turn towards what I guess you would call street and urban or art photography. Um, been very inspired by photographers like Trent Park, Todd Heido, Alexi Titarenko, and Fan Ho, just to name a few. And so today I'm going to talk about those four photographers and try a little bit of that style of photography for myself. So I hope you enjoy. You see, I've been trying to tell more of a human story of Alaska, not just one of the phenomenal natural beauty, because I feel like that story gets told over and over. But there's something unique about the people that choose to live in a place like this. And I think it's a story worth telling, and it's fascinating, and I hope people find it interesting. It's a unique place to live, because it's a land of extremes. The light is almost endless in the summer, and then non-existent in the winter. There's extreme weather and extreme animals, all kinds of amazing things. And if you choose to live here and deal with that, well, you're probably a little bit quirky and unique in my book. I never try to go out and exactly copy any particular photographer, but using their work as a jump off point to come up with fresh and original ideas is a great way to infuse something new into my own work. And you know, that works especially well when you're coming from a particular genre like landscape, but then you look into photographers from a different genre, like street or urban or art, and you take some of their ideas and try to twist them into your landscape photography. And things like that is how you get something that looks totally fresh and original, which like I said, is my main goal. But it isn't just Park that's been on my mind, but other masters of street and art photography, like Chinese photographer Fan Ho, who also brilliantly used high contrast images with deep shadows and sometimes blown out highlights to evoke very moody, but also very human, urban scenes. Fan Ho takes these incredible pictures that use light and shadow and contrast, usually juxtaposed with some shadowy figure, but you can't tell exactly what their identity is. And the effect is just so striking. It's a human story without violating anyone's privacy. And man, can it be powerful and effective. So I've been going around trying to find spots where I can use light and shadow in that strong juxtaposition to create something interesting and tell this human story of Alaska.
one of the places I like to come to tell this human story is the harbor. Because for a long time, Seward and a lot of coastal towns relied on the bounty that could be tugged out of the ocean. Nowadays, a lot of our commerce is tourism based and the hub for that too, a lot of it anyway, is also right here at the harbor. So one of the strange ideas I've had down here is to take pictures of reflections in the water and to show no actual land at all, just the reflection. And then in post-processing, flip it right side up. And sometimes it can be a little disorienting, not knowing what's going on, but it adds just enough kind of weirdness to give it something unique. Another thing I've found immensely fascinating ever since trying to do this different style of photography is reflections in windows. And one of my favorite places to take pictures of excellent reflections is right up here. Let me show you. I find this collection of old train cars super fascinating. It has all these awesome reflections. You've got rusty train cars surrounded by amazing mountains. Unfortunately, from what I understand, this spot is going to be demolished and turned into a bus turnaround or a parking lot or something dumb like that. So for now, I like to come here and take funny pictures or reflections and seeing what cool things I can do with that. Another inspiration is Russian photographer Alexei Titorenko. Titorenko became famous for his work City of Shadows, where he used long exposures of slow-moving breadlines in the early 1990s. The resulting images feel like lines of spectral ghosts crawling through a very grim and depressed city. It evokes what must have been the mood of everyday people in post-Soviet St. Petersburg. Hopeless, desperate, and anonymous. These images are beautiful and haunting. The first time I saw them, I'd never seen anything like it. In Alexei Titorenko's work, City of Shadows, was so brilliant in how he took those long exposures of slow moving bread lines in Russia and the black and white images that resulted. It did look as if everyone in there were just ghosts, nameless, faceless, haunting. And it really seems to capture what the mood must have been and the desperation of those times. So I took that idea and tried to take some long exposures of people moving, people or things driven by people. So I'm gonna show those to you now and let me know what you think down in the comments.
And finally, American photographer Todd Heido. Todd Heido is an absolute genius at using atmosphere to evoke mood. His work is noted for utilizing liminal spaces. In other words, places and settings that should be full of people, but for some reason aren't. These images set a mood of haunting and eerie absence. The viewer's imagination runs wild with questions. Where are the people? What just happened to make this place so stark and empty? And Todd Heido's work, ah, oh, I don't even know why I like it so much. In fact, when I try to explain it to other people, I find it hard to articulate. And sometimes they give me this confused look, like what's so great about that? For some reason to me, they just strike a chord and I love them. I have some ideas of ways I could take Todd Heido's work as an inspiration and put my own spin on them, but I feel like I haven't really had a chance to yet. So um, during the winter, I'm hoping to go out on some foggy evenings and try out some Todd Heido inspired compositions. Looking through these influences, a common thread runs throughout moody dark scenes that speak to some uncomfortable truth of the human condition. Not all is happy and colorful in this life, and exploring this grim, colorless side can feel like a path to healing. With these greats in mind, I turned away from my usual landscapes and took to the streets of my hometown. There is a different story of Alaska that needs to be told, not just one of the incredible natural wonder, but of the uncomfortable, sometimes uncanny experiences of the humans that forge a life in this unforgiving world. So there it is, brought you with me here today to talk about four photographers that inspire me and my idea to come up with a, a project to sort of tell the human Alaska story. It's good and bad. And um, I hope you enjoyed. If you do enjoy Alaska stories, click the link on this video over here, which is about uh, a runner in the middle of the Mount Marathon race who disappeared. Pretty fascinating Alaska story. But until next time, stay interesting and stay wild.